the history of humanity is blessed with endless, intriguing facts. However, beyond key dates and names that you learned about in your history class, there is a wide range of events that you weren't taught. So stay tuned as we tell you 20 historical facts you didn't know. Number 20. Dozens of imposters once claimed to be Marie Antoinette's dead son. Following the end of the French Revolution, eight-year-old Louis Charles was taken to prison. He was never seen in public again afterward. Now the question is, what happened to him? Louis Charles de France grew up as the charming son of Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. At the age of four, he became the heir to the French throne following the death of his brother. Since then, he was billed to become King Louis the Castillotinth. However, after the French Revolution destroyed his family, after his parents' execution in 1793, he was isolated in a prison cell in the Paris Temple. In the cell, he was abused and malnourished. Unfortunately, on June 8, 1795, Louis Charles died of tuberculosis. He was only 10 years old at that time. The young boy was secretly buried to avoid any suspicion. Some years later, dozens of men claiming to be the Dauphin would come forward. The imposters, numbering over 100 people, included most famously Charles Guillaume Nondorf. There were many practical reasons why the imposters would make a claim. A successful claimant could theoretically find himself on the throne of France. Many of the imposters got riches, fame, and adulation, thus encouraging others to come forward. Number 19. Women were once banned from smoking in public. On January 21, 1908, the Sullivan Ordinance was passed in New York City, which made it illegal for women to smoke in public. Many women didn't take the edict seriously, until Mayor George McClellan vetoed it two weeks later. But rather than punish the woman that engaged in the act, the edict put the business owners on whose establishment any woman is spotted smoking at fault. It was reported that one woman, Katie Mulcahy, was the only person known to ever break the ordinance. Although there were no specified actions against her, she was asked to pay a fine of $1.05 but was arrested after she refused to pay. The basis of the ordinance would appear flimsy to you. However, back then, a woman that smoked a cigarette was considered dangerously sexual, immoral, and not to be trusted. Isn't that weird? But men were free to smoke anytime and anywhere they wished. That the government made an attempt to ban only women from smoking says a lot about how society perceived the women folk. Number 18. Forks were considered a sacrilege. Do you know that the forks you often use at the dining were once regarded to be sacrilegious? In other words, by using them, you committed a great abomination. Forks were first introduced in Italy in the 11th century and were considered artificial hands and, as such, sacrilegious. After all, God has given us our fingers as natural forks. Forks have been around for quite a while, but it wasn't until the Middle Ages that they became widely used as kitchen utensils. The labeling of the use of forks as blasphemous started in the 11th century when a Byzantine princess scandalized the court by bringing forks to her new husband's Venetian household. She brought a golden fork at a time when most Europeans still ate with their fingers and knives. A local clergy would see the act of substituting natural forks, that is, fingers for artificial ones. It wasn't until the early 18th century that the use of forks became acceptable in England. Initially, people were using two-pronged forks. It took another hundred years to add the third and fourth prongs. Eventually, forks became more of a social matter. While some societies would accept its usage, others would mock those who used them. Number 17. The Titanic's owners never said the ship was unsinkable. If you saw James Cameron's iconic 1997 film you'd probably believe that the owners of Titanic actually ruled out the possibility of the ship sinking, but that's not true. Some trade publications had described the ship as practically unsinkable prior to her sinking. In fact, many survivors claimed that they decided to be a part of the maiden voyage because they had considered the ship unsinkable. Here's the truth about the myth. Shipbuilder Harland and Wolf did not claim the ship was unsinkable. It was actually a promotional item from the White Star Line that stressed the safety of Olympics and Titanic. In its claims, it said thus, 
As far as it is possible to do so, these two wonderful vessels are designed to be unsinkable. Then, there was a growing belief that science was the answer to all human problems. However, the sinking of the Titanic made people have less confidence in science. Number 16. The First Face on the Dollar One bill was not George Washington. When you hear the name George Washington, the first image that probably pops into your head is the picture of the first president that adorns the one USD paper dollar. Perhaps you could have tried to wonder how he ended up on the note. During the Civil War, the U.S. government had to print new forms of currency in addition to the numerous paper money in circulation earlier. The goal was to fund its war effort. It was at this time that it created the first official paper currency. One of the bills created at the time in 1862 was the official $1 bill, whose early version featured the then Secretary of the Treasury and designer of the country's first banknotes, Salmon Chase. Initially, the money printed was not backed by anything and became known as greenbacks. After the U.S. Bureau of Engraving and Printing took over the production of U.S. currency, George Washington's image then appeared on the $1 bill in 1869. Since its recreation in 1963, the $1 bill has not been redesigned, and there are no plans to do so in the nearest future. Number 15. Johnny Appleseed was actually real. American folklore is so populated that it becomes difficult to identify which ones are fiction and which are real. In the case of Johnny Appleseed, the folklore hero who is said to have traveled on foot across the United States planting apple trees, we are actually looking at a real person. Although some aspects of his life have ended up being mythologized over time, Appleseed's real name was John Chapman, and his hometown was Leominster, Massachusetts. He planted his first apple tree nurseries around 1798 in the Allegheny Valley in Pennsylvania, and then began planting everywhere he went. He would walk for miles every day and sleep outdoors, planting nurseries in the spots where the pioneers would settle. On how he earned his nick, he often carried a bag of apple seeds with him, in fact, a street was named after him, though his mythical name was preferred by the city planners. Number 14. India has not invaded any country in the last 10,000 years. In early 2022, India's defense minister, Rajnath Singh, asserted that India, in its long history, had never invaded or tried to conquer another country in the last 10,000 years. However, India is one of the most invaded countries in the world. But why did the nation choose not to invade other territories? Let's dive a bit into history. India started existing as a united nation in 1947. At that time, several autonomous factions frequently waged war on each other. It was only during the reigns of the Marathas, Rajputs, Mughals, and Mauryas that the Indian subcontinent was mostly governed as one. Several attempts by some powerful empires, including the Greeks, Mongols, and Persians to conquer ancient India failed. Most countries invade other nations to meet a need or out of greed. Fortunately, India has always had enough resources for exploitation and was also a major global trade hub throughout history. So there was no point in trying to invade other sovereign nations. Though its rulers sent emissaries to spread Buddhism and Hinduism, the campaigns were peaceful. Number 13. France built a fake Paris to fool German bombers during WW1. The French government tried to outsmart the Germans during W.B. Wu by building a fake Paris. The Paris was built out of fear of a possible overnight aerial attack. The fake Paris town, which featured replicas of famous landmarks, was built miles away from the actual Paris. The idea was conceived in 1917, a few years after the Germans first bombed Paris in 1914. Bloomberg reported that the lights in actual Paris were turned off at night during the real attacks. But in the constructed fake Paris, there would be dim lights to make it appear like people were trying but just couldn't keep themselves undetected in the dark. Unfortunately, fake Paris was never actually completely constructed after the war ended in 1918. As planned by Fernand Jacopozzi, an Italian engineer, the city would have three zones, but only one out of them was ever constructed. The fake city was deconstructed when the war ended. As you'd expect, the plan was kept as classified information. Number 12. Albert Einstein was once offered the presidency of Israel. Many people know famous Jewish scientist Albert Einstein for his discoveries in theoretical physics, 
But not all of them know he also had the opportunity to shine in the political world. Following the death of Chaim Weizmann, Israel's first president in 1952, the Israeli government, then headed by Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion, offered the presidency to Einstein. According to history, the role was more of an honor than a position of power and authority. The reason for the consideration to honor him was simple. Throughout his life, Einstein consistently supported the state of Israel. One would think that he would be glad to accept the offer. Unfortunately, Einstein declined the offer immediately on the basis of his advancing age and lack of relevant skills. He, in fact, refused an official meeting with representatives of the Israeli embassy. Although Einstein would be allowed to continue engaging in scientific research while president, he would have to relocate to Israel. Since Einstein declined the offer, Zionist leader Itzhak Ben Zvi assumed the role later that year. Number 11. German town Nordlingen is built inside a 14-million-year-old meteor crater. The town of Nordlingen, located in the Donauris district of Bavaria, Germany, is unlike any other town on the whole planet. With a population of 20000, the town is situated entirely inside a massive meteorite crater known as the Nordlinger Ries. The crater was formed some 14.5 million years ago, when a meteor about a mile across slammed into Earth. It was until recently that evidence that established the true origin of this town emerged. For many years, the shallow depression in the middle of which the town is situated was thought to be a volcanic crater. However, in 1960, two American scientists, Eugene Shoemaker and Edward Chow, were able to prove that the depression was a result of a meteorite impact. Shoemaker had reportedly scratched the walls of a church to see what it was made of, only to discover shocked quartz, a type of rock only formed by the shock pressures that are usually associated with meteorite impact. As the rock formations were subsequently explored, it was established that the crater was caused by a meteor impact rather than a volcano. Number 10. The Persians once used cats as shields in the Battle of Pelusium. You might have read about how cats caused the ancient Egyptians to lose the Pelusium War. The ancient Egyptians once worshipped cats so much that they wouldn't kill them even if it would cost them their lives. They believed that cats were the manifestation of goddess Bastet, a goddess of the home, fertility, and women's secrets. The affection of ancient Egyptians for cats became so glaring during the Persian invasion of Egypt. The king of Persians, Cambyses II, who reigned from 529-522 BC, knew how much the Egyptians treasured their cats. So the Persians collected as many cats as they could and put cats as well as dogs and sheep in front of their soldiers during the battle. Yes, apart from cats, ancient Egyptians also worshipped dogs and sheep. The Persians also painted an image of cats on their shields. The ancient Egyptians were reluctant to kill the cats out of fear of incurring the wrath of goddess Bastet. They had no choice but to flee the battlefield, thus losing the Battle of Pelusium in 525 BC and falling under the control of the Persians. Number 9. The Greeks believed beans contained the souls of the dead. You'd remember the Greek mathematician and philosopher Pythagoras from geometry class. He also had his own cult. His followers lived communally, studied the cosmos, and were vegetarians. But unlike today's vegetarians that avoid meat, Pythagoreans, followers of Pythagoras, avoided beans. They simply considered broad beans, also known as fava beans, a supernatural symbol of death, and avoided it. Pythagoras's consideration of beans as an act of cannibalism, so to say, attracted a lot of attention, including from ancient writers. Since kava beans were flesh-like, Pythagoreans believed that they could contain the souls of the dead. Their black-spotted flowers and hollow stems made some believers think of the plants as connected earth and Hades, which serve as ladders for human souls. What Pythagoras actually hated became what eventually caused his death. Legend has it that he lived in a cave for a time while hiding from a dictator. He was fleeing attackers, who chased and caught up with him when a field of flowering fava beans blocked his way, and he couldn't run further. Number 8. Alexander the Great was accidentally buried alive. Alexander the Great established what could be regarded as the largest empire of the ancient world. At the age of 25, his army overcame the Persian territories of Asia Minor, Syria, and Egypt without a single defeat. 
Unfortunately, he suddenly died in Babylon at the age of 32. For decades, historians have puzzled over the cause of his death. Some attributed it to typhoid, while others to alcoholism or even poison. But the mystery of his death may have finally been solved. The military genius suffered from a neurological disorder called Guillain-Barre syndrome. The rare disease left him paralyzed for six days. The disease left him unable to move, speak, and breathe. It was possible that the ancient Macedonian ruler was still alive while his soldiers prepared his body for burial in 323 BC. Dr. Catherine Hall of the Dunedin School of Medicine in New Zealand concluded that Alexander's real death was six days later than previously accepted. Therefore, his death may be considered the most famous case of pseudothanatos, otherwise known as a false diagnosis of death ever recorded. Number seven, there were female gladiators in ancient Rome. Though sparse, evidence exists in art, laws, and written accounts of the participation of women gladiators in the brutal sport during the Roman Empire. They fought each other fiercely with weapons for entertainment, but not nearly to the same degree as men did. Women of all classes, including the elite, participated. However, only the affluent women could afford training and had enough time to work out. In the first century BC, women could be seen engaging in a series of battles after dinner. These battles, especially against beasts, dwarfs, and other women in spectacles, were hosted by emperors Nero, Titus, and Domitian in the thriving city of Pompeii. A female gladiator was known as a gladiatrix. Female gladiators, or gladiatrices, were marketed as a novelty attraction. In 11 and 19 AD, the Roman Senate passed laws prohibiting middle- and upper-class women from fighting as gladiators. Number 6. President Zachary Taylor died from a cherry overdose. When President Zachary Taylor of the U.S. died after a brief illness on July 9, 1850, after only 16 months in office, there was no known cause of his death. You'd be surprised by revelations about the exact cause of his death. Different sources made different revelations. One of them was that Taylor consumed a large number of cherries and iced milk at a festival on the 4th of July. He then returned to the White House to take several glasses of water, which contained cholera-causing bacteria. Another source stated that Taylor could have died of gastroenteritis caused by a combination of highly acidic cherries and fresh milk. Others observers suspected food poisoning or typhoid fever. Taylor's doctors would attribute the cause of his death to cholera morbus, a term doctors previously used to describe gastroenteritis, inflammation of the small intestine caused by bacteria, a virus, or a parasite. Its symptoms included severe cramping, diarrhea, nausea, and dehydration. Following Taylor's death, his vice president, Millard Fillmore, was sworn in as the new president on July 10th. Number five, the Bloody Mary drink wasn't initially called Bloody Mary. The original Bloody Mary dates back to 16th century England. At that time, Frenchman Ferdinand Pete Petiot worked in a New York-style bar in Paris, where canned tomato juice was brought from the States. Russians fleeing their homeland during the Russian Revolution came to France with vodka and caviar. The bartender would later create a special taste of vodka bland by combining American canned tomato juice with Russian vodka and various spices. That was how the Bloody Mary was birthed. The cocktail was initially named the Bucket of Blood by an American as a reminder of a Chicago nightclub with a similar name. When the drink returned to the United States, it was known as the Red Snapper. It is now known as Bloody Mary. Although there's no definite answer as to how the cocktail became known as Bloody Mary, there's no denying that it remains one of the most popular cocktails today. Number four, athletes in the ancient Olympics performed naked. For a very long time, nudity has been a part of the Olympics. It started in the 8th century. Athletes competed naked as a means of honoring the Greek god Zeus. They wanted to show off their muscular physique and physical power as a way of also intimidating their opponents. The athletes drew inspiration from the depiction of the nudity of Greek heroes in artwork and sculptures. They were further inspired by the artworks to train harder and ultimately win their event. For the ancient Greeks, anyone that became a victorious Olympic athlete was considered a demigod. Some accounts hold that Orsippus, a runner from Megara, was the first athlete to compete naked. It was said that his loincloth fell accidentally during a foot race, an event that made him fun faster. Other accounts claim that it was Acanthus of Sparta that first appeared in the nude, 
claiming that nudity was a Spartan tradition. Number three, a pig was executed in France in 1386. The case of a sow executed in Falaise in northern France in 1386 is one of the few famous animal trials in history. The marauding pig had attacked a three-month-old infant, Jean Le Mot, who later died from injuries sustained during the attack. The animal was arrested and kept in a pre-trial detention cell with other human prisoners. An official trial was held, and a lawyer was appointed to defend her in court. How absurd! By the end of the trial, the animal was found guilty and billed to be executed by public hanging. On the day of execution, the animal was dressed in a man's clothes and led into the town square. To create the an eye for an eye feeling, the animal was first maimed and mutilated with a knife before being hanged. The execution was witnessed by both humans and animals. It wasn't the first time that savage swine were condemned to death for killing people, but only a few of them were mutilated. In a similar case in 1457, six sucklings were reprieved of a murder charge, owing to their age, but their sow mother was executed. Hilarious, right? Number two, people made clothes out of food sacks during the Great Depression. During the Great Depression, you'd hear something like, repair, reuse, make do, and don't throw anything away. Here's the reason. At that time, a significant number of families couldn't afford to buy new clothes at a store. When farm women could no longer get clothing materials, they resorted to using big sacks of flour or livestock feed to sew everything from dresses to shirts and even underpants for both boys and girls. They would even mend socks and sew patches over holes in clothes using sacks. Norma Ayler's mother helped her to make such type of feed sacks into dresses. Soon, the companies making the flour and feed sacks discovered the trend and started creating new patterns on the sacks. The style endured into the modern-day vintage market even after the end of the Depression. Number one, Russia ran out of vodka, celebrating the end of World War II. On May 9, 1945, the news that Nazi Germany had surrendered through the citizens of the Soviet Union into wild jubilation that even non-drinkers began to drink. On what necessitated the jubilation, the act of surrendering indicated the end of the Great Patriotic War, which cost the state the loss of more than 26 million people. Approximately 22 hours after the start of the celebration of the victory, Joseph Stalin addressed the nation. However, at that time, the population had consumed all the vodka reserves in the country, an unusual activity. The whole nation fell into a hangover which was considered a price for the liberation of Europe from the dominance of Nazi Germany. It is important to note that there was a shortage of vodka in the Soviet Union during wartime. Rather than utilize starch and grain to produce alcohol, they were used to produce food and supply the army. However, the production of vodka wasn't completely stopped. Even during the famine of the early 1930s, the nation ensured that it made grain and potatoes available for vodka production. It's one of the reasons why vodka revenues provided about one-fifth of the Russian government revenues. What other historical facts do you know? Make sure you share with us in the comments.